welcome to my podcast which is all about changing your business and money reality this is your master money coach dr gaurav dekha and you are money hello my friends how have you been i actually had the most amazing week weekend i would say because i uh, went out with a friend and uh, it was in delhi itself in the outskirts of delhi but then we decided to stay elsewhere and we wanted to take a break i really wanted to extend my sacred pause and and then i thought that okay fine i'm just going to travel and i'm also going to do my a tips coaching call from outside from elsewhere you know i always had this block that you know in order to do my business or in order to do my coaching calls i have to be home a lot of my uh, colleagues and friends who are also coaches and healers they would say you know gorav it's so difficult for us to commit to a one year program or maybe a six months pro- program i don't know how you are doing a lifetime program where you've committed people an entire lifetime of coaching you know you don't know where you are going to be the next week and i said that it doesn't matter i just have to show up i just have to uh, i mean i can decide wherever i want to be i could be in delhi i could be in guwahati i could be in honolulu i can be in london wherever i want and i can just keep showing up every saturday right and my people are not interested in where i am you know and whether how my back how my zoom background looks like or which city am i talking to them from my my entire audience is um interested in getting the value that i offer to them to be able to solve their problems to be able to make the money that they want to make you know and as long as i have this brain in my body my body could be anywhere in this world and this brain can just keep on bringing out uh whatever whatever value it brings out to its people so i think that kind of block was um, was gone for me the moment i started it and i allowed myself the flexibility and i question my thoughts that wherever i am thinking about oh if i am in so and so place maybe i will not be able to plan my calls that kind of thinking process was broken i would say it was it was questioned and i inquired into my own head and one of the reasons i could do it is because you know i began to feel safe inside my body wherever i was like earlier i would think that oh i have to rush to my uh clinic space to my clinic room where you know i i do my work from to, in order to record my podcast now nowadays i can just uh you know record my podcast or um i can just um even even inside eight apps when i record a few videos i just could be anywhere sometimes i am also sitting in a park i am in the midst of people i am in a public place sometimes i am in a hotel lobby and i'm still doing my recordings i'm still able to produce i'm still able to write i'm still able to talk to people even when there are people at my home sometimes there are guests you know at home and i know that they are moving in and out and sometimes you know the door of my room would be opened and someone might just walk in and they may ask me if i want tea <laughs> or sometimes what may happen is there might be someone ringing the calling bell of my house and coming in to check if there is uh, someone in the house or not and i know that my attention in that moment might be broken momentarily but at the same point of time i'm able to sustain uh my conversation with all of you i'm able to think the thoughts that i want to think in that moment in order to weave them into words and sentences you know uh for the longest time when i was growing up as a child um i remember some of my really older cousins would come home and when i would begin to talk they would make fun about my voice they would make fun about my accent they would make fun about uh the fact that i didn't know to talk um uh, something about the way i spoke right probably it's in a way feminine or it might be that my voice is thin all these kinds of um feelings and while i was growing up um i would be very tight i would be very contracted about speaking around people i would make sure that if i am writing something 
I am covered by walls, you know, I'm in a room where no one can see me, even when I'm writing, by the way, not even just talking, or if I have to go and give a speech somewhere, I would already imagine that the entire audience is looking at me and making fun of me and referring to me and talking something about my voice and the way I speak, all of these kinds of things, these were, you know, as a result of the traumatic experiences in my childhood, these were projections, I would say, that I had about the people who were listening to me or who were witnessing me, who were watching me. And the more I actually kept on working on those traumatic experiences, reaching out to those small little children inside me and staying with them, staying with the experiences, staying with those feelings, not discarding them, not trying to fight them, not trying to resist them. The more I stayed with it, the more I understood that, oh, this is not true for where I am today. I am an adult today and I can actually go back to looking at these children from a very loving, warm and even a neutral perspective and help them return to my body and integrate them, right? And it, it actually took a lot of time to uh, have that safety, sense of safety inside my nervous system. Because what happens is when you go through traumatic experiences where your personality, where the way you look, where the way you talk, where the way you present yourself was questioned in some way or the other when you were a child or even when you were in college, what happens is when you um, start your coaching business or when you start your healing business and when you talk to people, when you put out your content on social media, when you go live or when you record your voice, even when no one is watching, what may happen is you may imagine, you may, you may have an imaginary audience judging you, right? You may have an imaginary audience listening to you and making faces. You may have an imaginary group of people who are pointing fingers at you and you cannot speak about your truth or you cannot speak about things you believe in or things you want to talk about. For example, talking about sex and sexuality, right? Talking about um, divorce, right? Talking about um, gay rights, okay? Talking about money, right? Talking about death, talking about believing in a certain political movement, talking about being a brown Asian person in the midst of, uh, you know, a world that is thriving in, in business in terms of white supremacy, right? So talking about all kinds of things that you think you can talk about or you want to talk about and that matters to you, believing in movements, believing in philosophies that matter to you, but you cannot talk about them because you think that there might be someone out there who you may end up upsetting. There might be someone out there who might have, you know, something opposite to say to what you want to say, right? And all of these things come because we have a traumatized nervous system, okay? That we are constantly fluctuating between responses of fight and flight and trying to um, also fawn sometimes. Uh, many of you may already know what is fight and flight, right? Fight is the sympathetic response of the nervous system to fight a, a, a moment or a person or go into this very defensive mode, you know, having all the blood rushing into your body and your limbs and trying to, you know, put up a huge wall in front of you trying to fight. And flight is basically running away from the situation, running away from the experience to be so fearful that you flee from the spot, that you disappear from the spot. Now, there is another response called freeze, which you know that we're in, which is also known by the dorsal response, right? Of the, of, of the vagus nerve. So the dorsal response is when you go into numbness, when you go into freeze, when you go into um, you know, complete exhaustion, complete cutting away, complete disconnection, nothing goes beyond that. It's like going into your own shell, deep, deep, deep inner shell, and then that's it. You just disappear there, right? So that's like a freeze response, total disconnection, total numbing out. Then there is also something called the fawn response, F-A-W-N, fawn response. So in the fawn response, what happens is you feel that there is someone or there are some people who you have to please in order to be safe. And most of us, including me, used to do that because I wouldn't speak of things 
that I think would upset people, you know. I So when I <laughs> came with my masterclass, um, uh, it's a second masterclass that I did, which was called Why Sex Sells and So Would You, I myself had to question myself so many times that is this something I really want to sell? Is this something I really want to put out in the world, right? What if someone tells me that, you know, look at the title, the title says why sex sells, you know, which means you believe in selling, you know, sex being sold. What kind of an Indian are you? You live in an Indian society and you believe that sex can be sold. And I said, oh, wow, you know, I'm already imagining all these voices sort of referencing me and, and persecuting me, <laughs> you know, and I'm out there to educate people, to train people, to coach people, to believe in their true self. So if I do not put out this class and start talking about it, I will not only be doing a disservice to the people who I ask, who I request to show up in their truest form, but I would also be untrue to myself because that's what I teach. I teach people to be true to themselves. I teach people to own up their vulnerabilities, to own up all their risk points, to own up you know, everything that lies behind that line of shame, right? Because as I always say, you know, um, shame is actually that fabric which makes up a dress and that dress is called perfection and we all wear it and we try to wear perfection and we don't say things that uh, might upset people. We don't say things that are political in nature. You know, we don't say things that are, might just be a taboo, right? And, and that is also a reason why we don't talk about money. You know, I see so many people being so scared to talk about money in the offers that they make. I mean, I go to Instagram and, and I see people making reels. I see people putting up you know, beautiful, lovely post with nice plant pictures and, you know, animal pictures and talking about um, programs like Heal Your Anxiety or, you know, we have the cure for your depression or, you know, one-on-one -on -one life coaching calls are opening, but nowhere in those posts do they mention about their price. And, and here is what, you know, I question that why is the price not mentioned? Because when you do not mention the price, what happens is you don't know who all are the people who are coming to ask you about your offer. You know, your inbox might just be flooded with 100 people. And the moment they get to know about your price, they might just flee because they go into their sympathetic response. Their nervous system starts vibrating at the exact fear where your nervous system is vibrating. Your nervous system is vibrating at the, you know, impulse of fear and the frequency of fear. That's the reason why you did not put the number. You did not put the price because you think that if you put the price there, then people will not approach you. And somehow, by some weird luck, you will be able to rope in them by making sure that you are in a safe container when you DM them the price instead of putting your price out there in public. And I say that that's your you know, <laughs> fear and that's also your fond response because you also worry about people. What if I publicly put out my price? What if I publicly put out my number and people have things to say People will disapprove. People will not like look at me as someone who they can honor or who they can respect. And this is a dissociating thought that just because I talk about money, it might be so that there will be people to judge me. Instead, I question people. I challenge people that when people already are upset by you, people are not able to honor you. People are not able to take you in fully. They are not celebrating who you are, will those people buy from you anyway? They will anyway not buy from you. So why not just let them go by upsetting them, right? I was taking a coaching call from a coach of mine and you know she said the most wonderful thing in one of her calls. And she said that if you, know, you don't get unsubscription from your list of people to whom you send your mails, if you don't get one unsubscriber, <laughs> subscriber unscribing you basically, then you haven't, read you know you haven't written um a compelling email you know you haven't written an email that can shake people's minds and bodies you haven't written an email that doesn't trigger not in a negative way doesn't trigger in a in a challenging way for people to think beyond the box right so here i am presenting this to you that the more we are the more we work on our nervous system the more we are able to you know, embody that feeling of safety despite the imagination of unsafe environment around us. 
an unsafe environment, as I said, can be completely imaginary going on, you know, Instagram lives and thinking that the people out there are uh, talking behind your back. You know, they are uh, gossiping about you or uh, some comment may just appear wherein, you know, it might just bring in the sense of uh, a dark hole inside your chest. You know, for example, you are going on a live and you're talking about your offer and someone comes and says, but it's, you are so expensive. Doesn't it make you money minded? You know, you are a healer. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to heal people. And here you are asking money in your offer in your Instagram live. What kind of a person are you? And an immediate, you know, energy might just go inside your chest and might just drill a hole into your heart. And when we do not work on the nervous system, when we are unable to be in our um, ground, uh, or, you know, in neurological terms, when we are unable to be under the umbrella of a ventral experience. For example, our body is grounded. We, we have a sense of openness. We know that our safety belongs to our inner world, not by comments from the outer world, or we don't have to lean for our safety to someone else. You don't even have to lean for our safety to our coach. We can just embody the safety and keep on radiating the safety wherever our voice and our words and our sounds and our sight goes out to. And whatever comes from the external world, I can just deflect it because I'm so grounded and inside my body that nothing from the outside world can actually enter and create a fracture inside my body and inside my nervous system. So when we are in that kind of space, when we are in that ventral umbrella, right? Then what happens is none of these comments, you know, none of these sites, none of these expressions by people uh, can actually harm us. You know, they may bring certain triggers, but then what may happen is we may, you know, zoop go into the trigger and have an immediate capacity to also return from that trigger to a more receiving state, to a more grounded state, to a more open state. And what may happen is we may even go ahead and reply to that comment and say that, yes, I happen to be a coach who believes in money because money is equally divine as anything else in the world. And we may have created a polarized opinion about money because money was always seen to be evil. Money was always seen to be breaking families. Money was always seen to be, you know, driving people into greed and probably killing people. And But that was not a money problem. That was a mindset problem. That was an intentional problem that people had. People had the kind of mindset and that's the reason why you know we had all of, all of these uh, you know horrible things happening around us but it was not a money problem because money was neutral so the re you you can give give out replies like that you can give out give out responses like that only when you feel secure inside your body and that's why even inside ATEPS, i continuously um, thrive strive strive to uh, create that sense of safety inside the body because safety is not um a word it's not an intellectual experience you know sometimes you are alone in the room and you know you are safe but your heart still tells you that oh anyone can break in through this door and i don't know what might happen because safety is a bodily experience it's a somatic experience it's not um an intellectual brain experience and therefore when we learn about safety when we learn about openness when we learn about uh, being inside our body and allowing a nervous system to have more space inside us, these are very, very somatic experiences. And that is how we develop capacity inside our body. It's not a one day thing. You know, you learn about nervous system and of course you have intellectual information about nervous system, but then you also start practicing being in a state of, you know, groundedness. From that groundedness, we can have a state of curiosity. From that curiosity, we can have a state of excitement right and looking forward to what can show up what more is possible but when we are shrouded by fear when we are shrouded by um, trauma when we are shrouded by grief and irritation and frustration right we may just block all those experiences out and we may do that because we just want to disconnect out of fear and out of trauma right so working with the nervous system is one of the primary ingredient of being a successful coach, of being a successful healer. You will sell as a successful coach and a successful healer because you will be able to build relationship with people and, of course, ask for money for the service that you provide, the value that you bring, only when you are not in the flight, fight, freeze, or fawn mode. 
because the clients that you are interacting with are also vibrating with your sense of safety. Remember that our clients are regulating with our nervous system, just like we regulate, let's say as a child with our mother's nervous system, right? So both our nervous system has to be in a regulated state and our client can just go, you know, to Mount Everest and then jump down to the depths of ocean while talking to us because they are fluctuating. They are going through all kinds of emotions. And in that moment, if our emotions keep on fluctuating and if our body keeps on moving in and out uh, of uh, the zone of safety and groundedness, then what may happen is we may actually um, end up making our client more and more scared, more and more unsure, more and more uncommitted, right? So it is our responsibility to work on our nervous system so that our clients can regulate with our nervous system. And at the end of the day, they're able to believe what we have got to offer and hence you get paid, right? So um, I'm soon going to come up with a masterclass on generating nervous system safety in the process of selling and marketing. I don't know when, probably it will be in the first week of November, uh, but inside ATEPS, we are working on nervous system safety every single day. I'm even going to come up with a portal on nervous system inside ATEPS so that people can you know, look at the videos in the portal and are able to uh, be in a grounded state, an open state before they go for a sales call or before they go for a marketing call or you know, before they even make their post or even go live. But I just wanted to let you know that this is why I talk so much about nervous system. And if you haven't checked out ATEPS, my money and business coaching program, please do check it out. Um, we are still taking in people and it's a lifetime program and you get to experience a whole lifetime of experiencing deep, deep, deep joy and making money in the process. It's open for all coaches, all healers, all spiritual entrepreneurs in the field of healing and coaching, okay? All you have to do is go to my Instagram, which is at Dr. Gaurav Deka, and click on the link in my bio and you will have the page for ATEPS. Of course, my Instagram is like a mini ATEPS. Everything that I write about is ATEPS. So you can just go through all the posts, maybe take an afternoon and, take, and go through all the posts that I've written on Instagram. It will bring you the most amazing, you know, experience and value, right? And you can also check out my uh, public podcast, which is called You Are Money. And it's available on Spotify and um, Apple Podcast. And it's a storehouse of not only a lot of information, but a lot of people have reported that just by listening to my podcast and applying what I talk about in my podcast, they are able to double and 3x their income since they have listened, right? So go there and binge on the episodes. <laughs> And of course, I will speak to you soon. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are willing to change your business and money reality, head to my free coaching community on Facebook called You Are Money. Link is in the show notes. And do not forget to leave a review on Spotify.com or Apple Podcast. Thank you so much.